the first thing you're going to want to do is break all the lug bolts loose on the car. Make sure that it's on the ground so that you can put maximum torque to breaking these loose. If it's been a while since the wheels have come off, it's going to be difficult. Each one of these is a 14 millimeter. We're not removing them completely yet, we're just breaking them all loose. You may also remove the center cap for the wheel. Take a flathead screwdriver, be a small opening here, put it between it, pry it off. Before removing these nuts, you want to make sure you get your axle nut loose. The way that these rotors and hubs are designed is basically, this is a mounting flange that your wheel gets bolted to, and then we have four bolts that come in from the back of the rotor, which attach this to the rotor itself. Holding all that on is this axle nut. Now you see how it's pressed in here where this keyway would be? Here's a more close up view of what's going on. You need to take a screwdriver and pry this opening back out so that you can now spin the nut loose. This divot is holding the nut in place from spinning on the shaft and keeping your whole drivetrain together basically. Without this nut, your axle could potentially pop out behind of it and that would be terrible news. Go ahead and get this part pried out. We just need enough taken out so that the nut will be able to spin off of the stub. Once you believe you have it far enough out, you're going to want to grab one of these. Depending on the year, is going to be either a 29 or 30 millimeter axle removing tool socket. Um, what I mean is, I believe the newer generation Festivas, those uh, 1990 and up, use a 30 millimeter, and those carbureted 1989 and before use a 29. Don't quote me on that check yours if anything you can always return the one that you buy if it's wrong so essentially you need to have this thing on the ground so that you can put some serious torque behind it after making sure that there's nothing interfering so that you can twist off the axle nut go ahead and put on your socket and get to torquing go. If I was smart, I would go to the other side of the car and do the same thing now. Go ahead and jack up the car. Underneath the car, uh, right behind the rocker, you can find this long stretch of metal. This is a very structural part of the car. So what I like to do is I like to jack up about a foot and a half back from the beginning of it. I'll use a piece of wooden block on top of my jack, lift up the car, that way it distributes the weight a little bit better. And then I'll use my jack stand as another safety precaution with another piece of wood on top of it right up here. I'll show you in a second. I now have two safety measures holding up the car. We can now remove the bolts completely and take off the wheel. If your wheel is stuck and not coming off immediately, bang on alternating sides and it will come loose. Up next, we're removing the caliper assembly. There's two 12 millimeter bolts, one here and then one right back here. Go ahead and remove both of them. This may take some force as, oh man, that's a big spider. <laughs> this may take some force as to how long it's been sitting still. Uh, mine was driven pretty regularly, but that doesn't stop them from being stuck. I had to use a cheater pipe in order to get them broke loose. If you don't know what a cheater pipe is, it's a long piece of pipe. You can slide over the end of your ratchet so that you can get more torque leverage on it. Is this spider alive? Oh yeah! Oh man! <laughs> okay, anyway, go ahead and break those two loose and I'll show you what's next. One. Two. It should be noted that they are different lengths and that the shorter one goes on the bottom. We should be able to remove the caliper from the rotor assembly now. Basically, we need a prying device and then pull it out this way. And this whole assembly should fall out in this direction. Oof. My assembly basically wasn't doing much of anything, as you can tell from the wear marks on the rotor itself. So now we need a place to hang this thing up so that it doesn't put tension on the flexible brake line. Lucky for me, it looks like all my brake lines are brand new. So that's great. We can go ahead and remove the axle nut completely now. Next, we need to remove the hub assembly. Uh, there's no way to take this rotor off without 
uh, pressing out the rest of the assembly. So we have to do way more work than we should in a normal car. So we got to get the strut bolts out, these two. Down here, we have to get this nut loose so that we can knock the ball joint out from underneath of it. And the same thing with this upper ball joint. Now, this one has a cotter pin in it, so we need to remove the cotter pin, get the castle nut off, and then knock that loose. I don't have a fork spreader, so that'll be fun. But basically, loosen up this bolt, get these two out, get the top one removed. Both strut bolts are 17 millimeter. This castle nut is also 17 millimeter. And this one is 14 millimeter. So after getting all the nuts out, now I am just kind of trapped in the bottom one, but I'm trying to get the axle out of the hub so that I have more range of movement. It's sort of working. And a bunch of spiders came out and attacked me. I'm not making this up. It looks like my axle shaft is pretty tore up too. I'm gonna have to think about replacing that, probably. The only thing left to do now, besides get my hands as gross as they possibly can be, is pull it off of that bottom piece. And that's it, now we got the whole hub off. I can't believe this is required. So for this next part, you're going to need a pretty heavy duty vise because without ordering the specialty tool that they say you need, you're gonna need to do things the hard way. So first you need to chalk up this piece in your vise. Make sure it's very, very sturdy because you're going to be beating on this surface. Right. Using some brake clean to just clean out some of the gunk in the way. So this right here, this machine surface is the surface you're gonna be hitting with the hammer and whatever type of tool you're using, a drift or a socket. That's perfect. All right. Oh yeah, so it's pushing everything through. Yep, that's why you can't you can't use a press because you're just gonna you're just gonna press against itself. Yeah, it's very important. You make sure you get this spacer back where it goes. They are different size ones and it could be different size from the left to the right. Just make sure you get that where it goes. Adjust your lash on your bearing. So this is your race. We'll have to drift that out and then we'll have to pull this seal out and then we'll start pulling this this bearing. You got seals, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, we'll pull this seal out, pop this bearing out, run the new races in. Yep. Easy. It's a yes? Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Grease in the face? Yeah, and hair and beard. It's yes. your old bearing. It's a beautiful bearing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think the bearings were actually making any noise. It's just if you got it apart, it's a good time to do it. Yeah. You know? Every single shop was like, you know I'm going to destroy these taking them out. I don't care. Do you want to do it? Like, uh, yeah. Pay me seventy dollars a side. What? <laughs> no, thank you. Clean out as much of these surfaces as you can. Only cause I don't like grease. Cause all this is getting replaced anyways. But with new grease. Yes. But yeah, them, them races don't look bad. But we're gonna make them disappear. Okay, so we're gonna hit the back side of the race here and pop it out. We're going to do it evenly here, 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 and here and pop it out so that way we don't damage the surface that the race sits in. You don't want to go too far in because then you'll hit the actual spindle hub assembly, whatever you want to call it. You want to get a nice, nice angle like that. Matching one for this side. Yes. Let's race on those sides. And we gotta drift them back in. Cool. 
your race is going to sit flush up against this here on each side. So you got your inner and your outer. This would be the inner, I believe. Like uh, inboard and outboard for the car. So if you don't have a socket the right size when you're pressing in the new one, you or can drift set. You can use the old bearing race uh, upside down because it's obviously the size of the other one. It's just a nice surface to hit on. Surface. Success. Let me clean that out. Then you can clean because it's dirty. After you get the first race in, you can flip over the assembly and press in the other. That one worked out a lot better. And how do you get that one out? <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's a step. It, it It's a couple foul bigger and then it Tapers shrinks. Down. Yeah. Uh, make sure to pack your bearings if you want to see an instructional video on this. I'm not the guy. Right. <laughs> Go find another video on YouTube where they show you how to pack bearings. Or buy the tool. There's a tool? Yes! There's a thing you fill it. It's a tub. You fill it with grease and it's, like, it's got a cone. On one side and on the it's it allows grease to come up through the center. You put the bearing in there and it seals to this side and you push down and the more you push down it forces all the grease to come out. Oh. Yeah, it yeah. Does. Nah. It sounds like money. It is. It's like six bucks at Harbor Freight. Woo. <gasps> this is how you use gloves. One time, goodbye. Take them off. Throw them away. You don't use them until they're all tore up and not effective as gloves anymore? Well, so they want it this way. With the rounded surface up. The seal's rubber. Well, the red part is metal. Oh. There we go. We should just be able to give her a little tap. Alright, we're going full blown piece of wood here. Okay. Alright, so then your CV axle rides in here and it seals to the CV axle. Don't forget to clean that surface real nice mm. with like scotch Brite or something and then put a little bit of lube on it. That way the, the stuff. You know what I'm saying? You, you want to do stuff. We're basically done with this one. Super important preload spacer. Yes. I'm not sure if it matters which way it goes on or off, but we're going to make sure it goes on the same way it came off. I don't think it matters, but um, I don't want to take that chance. It's not worth it. There's going to be four 14 millimeter bolts you need to remove to separate the hub face from the rotor itself. And just like that? Just like that. It's done. Easy. It's the easiest rotor job to do in the world. Yeah. For this job, I purchased two cans of brake cleaner, but more may be required, yeah. depending on your application. We basically got to separate it right here. The bearing is seated up against the whatchamacallit here, the doohickey. You got to separate it, so I'm just going to use this straight down. You don't want to lean this way or this way because you're just going to bite into either the bearing or the spindle and go straight down, separate. I'm going to break the bearing real quick. Oh, yeah. They're professionals. Okay. Seal off. This went flat face to the thing. So you gotta improvise sometimes, because I'm missing some of my tools. I just moved, and they all went everywhere. So we just use a pickle fork, a couple solid taps, and then now we can get back behind it with a punch or something. Let me do one more hit. I don't think we're about there. Yeah, now we can get behind it with a punch. Hopefully.
Cool beans, dude. That's the inside of the bearing. It would be this section here. And what we did was we cut it off just to make easier access to get to that lip. You don't have to, but... All right, so I did mar it up a little bit right there. So I'm just going to clean it up with a little piece of sandpaper. That is a sealing surface. So we're just going to smooth that edge out. So that when the seal rides across it, it doesn't kill it instantly. I don't even think the seal's going to ride on it, but... So now we're going to put the new bearing on. Use a small bit of lube or grease. Yeah. Trans lube is the best. It's green and it says trans lube. It's pretty cool. Use it to build transmissions. Hmm. But the name didn't give that away. It makes sense. It's great stuff. This goes here. Nice. Yeah. We'll go from there. So when starting these, it is critical that it needs to be dead center. Uh, if it's crooked, it's going to bind up and you're going to have all sorts of problems. That's as little as I can go with the socket. Okay, so another reason why it's important to have the right tools, we're just having to, you know, give a little love taps on each side, trying not to hit the outer part of the bearing. and. Um, I did this once before and I'm pretty sure I used a socket, but I can't find anything right now. I'm still trying to sort my tools out. So just slowly but surely. Yeah, we're just little love taps here. That's all it takes. You don't have to have to really give humongous whackings. See how it's solid sounding now? She's seated. It's as far as she's going. I've got the bearing on. When you're drifting it on, you'll be able to hear the difference in sound once it seats, and you'll want to make sure you go four corners, make sure it's seated level properly, and then you put your spacer on. This is very important. I've seen people freak out on the forums because it's not there. But no, it's important because it'll uh, it spaces out the spindle, this half of the spindle to the other half, and make sure everything is in alignment. And then if you want, you can throw some more grease on it. Definitely going to want to put a little dab of grease on this rubber seal here so that when you press the other side on, it just slides right over instead of snagging and, and damaging parts. And yeah, but for now, this is done. We'll move to putting the rotor on, and we'll have one complete assembly. So your new brake rotor is going to come in a bag that has special anti-rusting agents. Needs to come off. Yeah. We're so that on the floor. this is why you bought so much of that brake cleaner. Just a liberal coating of brake cleaner, and then you're going to want to use a mostly clean rag to wipe off the surface. Or a paper towel. You think Hulk Hogan ever learned that not everyone is, in fact, his brother? <laughs> it's good times. Alright, so we found in the service manual these brake rotor to hub bolts, is what they're called, are 33 to 40 inch pounds. I'm going to start at 33, and that's probably all I'm going to do, to be honest with you. Although if you ran them on with an impact like I did, you're probably, probably already at... Nope. Close. Close. Tighten with an alternating pattern every time you can. And always keep it 90 degree. And then do a circle after. Okay. That one's good. Now we drift on the spindle assembly. So we're going to put this section onto this section. Might want to put a little bit of lube on the inside of here, not a whole lot. And a little bit more on the race here. Just so that when you are 
drifting it together you don't damage your seal because the seal is on this section and it's got to plop into there like so okay so now that we're at this point you have the section of the bearing that you're going to be smacking right here we'll be using it. Smack in here. Oh, oh, oh. Psh, dude. Psh. Dust shield. Psh. Rookie. Dude, I'm fired. I'm fired. I fired myself. You want to make sure that your dust shield isn't interfering with your spindle to rotor hub <laughs> assembly. Yeah, don't bend it like we did somehow. Yeah, that's weird. I think the. Oh, oh you know was, what? When it we dropped it. The... No, when we dropped it, I thought. Didn't we drop this? Maybe that side. It might have been. Because okay. it's the first one, right? Yeah. 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 It'd be like that sometimes. It do be like that. You should always make sure that the seal is seated properly. Okay, so in our case, it wasn't seated all the way down on one side because I used the other race and a piece of wood. So I had to tap it down. You got to do it very carefully. I used a flat tip screwdriver and, um, don't hit too much in the same spot because you'll puncture it. So you just tap, 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 tap. She'll drop in. But that's done. Yeah, spinning freely. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Time so to move on. yeah, all we gotta do is the other side now, and then we will slide back into the brake pad install. Something like that. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> all right. As you can see, we reinstalled the spindle knuckle assembly, put all of our bolts back in, and put the caliper back on with the old brakes in it. Something to remember. For me, when I started this project, I wanted to make sure that the brakes were all bled just in case that was my main problem. Uh, that was not the problem. So they have been re-bled, and they basically have a whole bunch of brake fluid in there, and the brakes are as far back as they could possibly be. So I'm going to put new pads on, which is going to simulate that. But you want to make sure that you have your cap off of your brake fluid reservoir and make sure that you have something underneath the car to catch all this brake fluid because there's a good chance it's all going to spill out once we start compressing the piston on the opposite side. So here you can see the caliper back on the knuckle assembly. The first thing we're going to do is remove this metal clip. Now, you can see our brake pads are moving freely within there. I'm going to get in here with a screwdriver, pop that one out, and do the same thing on the other side. You see the one at the bottom popped out? And I'm going to flip these up. So you can see how this spring is not holding us back but this one is. That's because this one is sent through the center of the pin so that it can't fall out. And this one also kind of retains this one. So we have to remove this one and then we should be able to pull the pin out. The bottom pin should probably already be able to come out, no problem. And also my brake pad box didn't come with a new spring so we're going to have to want to not destroy that. With just a very little bit of pry I got the hook to come out and it doesn't look like it's lost any of its springiness. So we'll set that aside so we can lose it and then we're going to go ahead and pull this pin out. We can remove this spring. We want to remember the order of all this stuff because I'm definitely going to forget it. And then our pads simply come right out except I'm going to have to loosen the caliper because that's what's holding the force on this side. To make it easier on my life, because this has been one heck of a project, I'm just going to take the whole caliper back off and reassemble it once we're done. Now we've got that on our little stand. I should be able to pop this pad out. Try and remember which side goes where. The, uh, the squealer one is going to go on the inside, closest to the motor. And the normal pad is going to go on the outside. Let's go ahead, 
grab one of our new pad sets. Squealer goes on the inside. Normal pad goes on the outside. If you have really good brake lines, your calipers might start to press back in. Uh, mine don't seem to be that good. <laughs> so you might have to keep pulling this new pad further back in with the piston to make sure that you have enough room to fit it over your rotor. We're gonna do our best to put our clip back in where we found it. Get our pads lined up. Going to send our first pin through the assembly. Proper tools always makes life easier. We got that one all the way through. And go ahead and put in the bottom pin. Now we have to rotate the pin until we can find our little hook, feed the clip through, rotate it back over. Please don't watch me struggle with this. It actually went on really easily. I don't know why I shut off the camera. So we got our whole assembly. There's a good chance that the pads will not be compressed enough for you to fit this assembly back over top of the rotor, but you could try it anyway. There's some pins in the back that are probably going to fight you. Slip it back on to where it belongs. With the back side of the caliper assembly flipped over, you can see that there's these squishy parts right here. There's a hollow tube that runs in between here, one for the top and one for the bottom. There's another gentleman on YouTube who did an excellent walkthrough on this. I'm going to link it in the description below. Uh, it's not to give him more views, it's just he does a way better job of explaining it than me. You want to grease up these surfaces because Without this being able to function properly, your brakes are never going to work as good as they could. And in a Festiva, that's super important. Uh, driving these things is like driving a motorcycle, as anyone who's doing this will know. You gotta use momentum and speed, and basically, uh, you gotta watch out, because you got a little car, and there's other people who don't care about you on the road. So you gotta have good working brakes so you can weave in and out of traffic. Anywho, what I've done, is I just went in and hit them back a little bit. You can see how badly greased mine are. Basically, they were so shot out, uh, I couldn't slip this back over the rotor assembly. So I should have plenty of room now. We're gonna put it back together. Once I get some lithium grease in this car, I can go uh, pull these back apart and do it the right way. Let's go ahead and put this caliper back on. Oh, so much more room for activities. That's wonderful. I could hardly fit it back on before. All right, we're gonna run the bolts back in and I'll show you what's next. For this next part, you gotta have your wheels back on the ground. You're also going to need your big axle nut installer because we gotta put a bit of force on this. Now we can see where our old mark was on the nut, so we're trying to get that back to the same spot. Again, serious torque is probably required. I'm gonna need a cheater pipe. Now that we have a nut in a very similar space, preferably you would want a punch to do this, but I don't have one. So we're just going to take our flathead screwdriver and fold the nut back over in the spot that it was. I'm gonna hit this a couple more times and we're basically done. Here we can see the completed assembly. I just used a five pound sledge, it made it much easier. If you were able to pull some knowledge from this video and it helped you out in your rotor assembly, please give it a like. It really helps me and the channel out. If you wanna know more about some of my other Festivas, that one's got a Turbo LS. And that one's currently a parts car. There are plenty more Festiva videos and car related videos on this channel. Otherwise, it's time for me to go break in these new brakes. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next episode. I wasn't kidding, Turbo LS.